Okay, so as I said today, we're going to look at uh, just just a general introduction to class-based views in Django, and we'll also look at the VS Code debugger. So for um, class-based views in Django, so uh, I've got here. Uh, let me share my screen. Uh, am I sharing my screen? I don't think I am. All right, so I've got, this is from uh, Monday. I just copied, uh, I copied the, the README app here. So it's the same thing, uh, with like some slight modification. So we have, uh, so just to walk through how this works. So this is already pre-made. So if we were just looking at this, we kind of like, okay, so where's the main project here? Well, Looks like there's a blog and that is probably not the main project and there's my site, which is the main project. Okay, so I'm gonna go to the URL. So if I'm looking at this from the perspective of a client making a, a request to the site, I'm first gonna go to the URLs. I'm gonna see all these routes. So I know that I can go to slash admin or slash posts. So if I go to slash posts, this, uh, this router is basically gonna hand me off to this app blog.urls. So from the top level router, the top level URLs, I'm gonna get handed off to a, you know, a lower level router, which is blog.urls. So I go here. So I, I can see all the routes that I have available to me, which is nothing to get a list of all of the, the posts. I can go to a particular post here. This is a detail view. I can create a new one, I can edit a particular post, and I can delete a particular post. So if I go here and one of these routes matches, it's going to call this corresponding view function right here. So for example, this views.postlist, which we can go to right here, views.postlist, and then views.postlist, is going to, so any view function is going to take in a request and return a response. So, uh, you know, it, a built in Django HTTP request object. That's a particular object in Django. And then it's going to return a response object. So, what I'm doing here is I'm going to just, I'm using my models. So, this is imported from dot models. Uh, so, I'm going to grab all of the posts here. And this is, ordered by a publish date, which actually I'm gonna not use that. I'm just gonna get all of the posts and then I'm gonna return, I'm gonna use this render shortcut function, which is gonna allow me to do, ultimately it's going to return a response object, which I, you know, Django requires, that's part of the, you know, the contract for a view function that Django has to return a uh, response object. And that, uh, that render method is going to take a re the, the request. It's going to take basically a relative path to the HTML. And it's going to take any optional context that you want to pass in to that um, uh, the, uh, templator. OK, so that's basically it. And we can take a look at the model right here. Um, so we just have one model. We have uh, an author, which is a foreign key. And we're using uh, the built-in Django user model. So Django has a built-in user model, um, and we're doing that. We'll see. We'll see more about this uh, next week. Okay, and this should all be pretty straightforward. Um, I have a super user, so let me go ahead and run this. Got any questions so far? All right, so I go here. I don't have uh, a slash nothing, which obviously would not be good in a production application, but this is fine now. So I go to slash post and I can see here's the blog and I click on that and I go, you know, this basically just returns me to slash post. I can redirect it anywhere. This is just based on the, the A tag that's in there. Let's take a look at that. So if I go here to templates and I have a base template 
here, I can see that <clears throat> this my blog h1 element. So the the href is going to be dynamic. So I could hard code, you know, whatever slash posts. But if I ever change that, then I'd have to potentially change that anywhere. So this is one reason why we use the uh, named routes. So this is just the, the view. So post list, if we look here, post list, this is the view. And in our URLs, we happen to name that post list, although we could name this, you could name this anything. So if we change the name of this post list one or something, we could go back here into the base URL and change this to post list one. I don't know where else this is, exists, but see if that works. Okay, so that works fine. So I'm gonna change that back, but so that's why we have the named routes there. All right, any questions about that? Okay, so this is the application we're working with, and we can see that the views. Um, they're all functions, which is, you know, fine and dandy. There's nothing wrong with that. But uh, you may notice if you start doing a lot of these that there's, you know, a fair amount of repetition here. So, for example, this post list and really any, any route where you will want to get, like, everything, which is a common thing to do, um, you're going to follow the same pattern. So you end up creating a lot of functions over and over and over again that are, you know, 90% similar. So uh, you can't really, um, you know, there are limits to what you can do with functions in terms of reusability. So uh, Django has something called class-based views and you don't have to use them, but uh, they're available to you. So instead of creating all of these, uh, these functions, what you do is you create classes. So just like the model, for example, the model or the forms where you have, uh, you create classes to represent what you want with the, the class-based views, you use classes instead of uh, functions. And just like everything in Django, it's been around for a while. And so there's usually half a dozen ways of, of doing everything. Um, and so the views have different levels of complexity. So here's the documentation for the views. Uh, you can take a look at it. You don't really, uh, you can do everything you need to do in Django without using classes, but you know, it, it's, good to, it's good to know about and maybe you get to play around with a little bit. Okay, so class-based views and then, um, We'll, we'll take a look at the source code real quick, um, but there's, there's a whole hierarchy. So there are like base classes for particular things. And then there's all kinds of, um, there's a lot of multiple inheritance. You get classes that are kind of combinations of other classes. Let's look at this. So this is probably good to take a look at. Um, so here's a quick, comparison. So if we have a basic uh, a view function that makes a get request, we return a response object, that's fine. Here, so view is the most, it's the highest level uh, class. So you're not getting very much for free, but you can override. There's a, uh, a get method instead of saying checking like if request.method equals get, there's just a get method that you override. And then you do whatever you do in, in the get. So, so at this, using just the view, which is kind of the, the, the base class for everything has the least, uh, the least customized stuff in it. Um, what, what you get is basically some uh, reorganization instead of checking for, uh, the, the HTTP request method, you just write method. So you write def get, def post, def head, def whatever. And then when you use it in URLs, instead of 
with a function here, you pass it the function. So views dot post list. So this post list is a, a function or just passing it in there. This is a little bit different when you use a view. So what, what you do here is you write this class, my view, which is subclassing view. And then in the URL patterns, you pass it in, but you have to call this as view method. And we'll take a look at this in a sec as well. But you can see here that this path, this path function, it takes in you know, a, a route and then it takes in a function. So this, this method, even, even if we're using classes for views, we, th this path method still, or path function still requires uh, some kind of function that it can call. So this as view, you pass, you pass in the, the class that you made, then you pass in, you call as view, which will actually re return a function. But um, so this as view will kind of essentially transform your uh, class into a function that the path can, th can then call, okay? All right, any questions about that so far? All right, so let's yeah, keep moving. Quick question. Yeah. So is, is that the same um, for every, you're gonna pass that exact same thing into every path? And if so, how does it know which, which um, specific function to use? Yeah, so it would, for example, uh, we'll, we'll actually uh, replace this uh, post route here. Um, but what you do instead of having all these individual functions to get called, you would just write a bunch of individual classes. And then in the URLs, you would say, you know, my class dot as view instead of passing. Uh, is that what your question is? Uh, yeah, I guess I didn't understand that when we do it that way, each one of those functions that we had before is going to be a separate class. Yeah. Yeah, there okay, are. I, I thought it was going to be one big class with all of those functions under it. That's what I misunderstood. Yeah. Well, so you can. So, um, there are kind of very uh, abstracts of classes that basically will inherit from everything. That's like a create, read, update, destroy view, um, which I wouldn't necessarily recommend using. Um, but yeah, so there are some that kind of do everything that would handle a post request and a get request and an update and, and everything. But, but we're, we're gonna work at a slightly lower level. All right. So um, yes, so what we're gonna do here is we're gonna replace this post. So, you know, you can mix and match as you like. So you can use functions for some things and uh, class-based views for other things. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna comment this out and I'm gonna replace this with a class-based view. So first thing I'm gonna do is, you know, is there a built-in view to Django that, that will handle a post request? Um, and there is, so let me go ahead and just see if I can look that up. Uh, task based views, and then we'll do uh, there's a create view. I guess I'm cheating here, but so there's a whole set of uh, a whole set of views or class views that will handle basic stuff. So there's a form view, a create view, an update, a delete. And we'll take a look at the create one. So you can also mix and match if you just need one particular functionality. You can kind of mix and match. So uh, Django uses something called mix-ins, which are basically like, um, it's basically like uh, composition. Um, so you take 
some specific functionality and you you add it to your inheritance hierarchy and then you can use everything in there so it's not really um it, it it's more for like specialized like adding specialized functionality okay uh so this create view if you look at the documentation so it comes from django use generic edit create view it's a view that displays a form for creating an object redisplaying the form with validation errors if there are any so that's something that we get for free so that's um so if we fill out the form wrong we'll get the validation errors displayed without doing anything else and then saving the object so that sounds like what we need um and here it's telling you the the ancestors does anyone know what uh, the mro is so it uh it doesn't really matter but it's called the uh, method resolution order um and python uses multiple inheritance so you can have a class that inherits from multiple subclasses <clears throat> and when you do that there's a question of well if i have two parents and they both have the same method which which method do i use so there's the possibility for ambiguity there and so django has a particular way of doing it you just have to know what it is um, but the, the short answer is that the class you list first is the is the one that will be called but here, uh, this create view inherits from a whole bunch of stuff. So it's a little bit messy, uh, but so this create view has access to this single object template response mixin. Template response mixin, you don't need to know what any of this stuff is, but um, there's a whole bunch of stuff. And at the very bottom here is view, which we saw earlier. So view is kind of the base class for any particular view. And it describes some of the, the things. So template name suffix, object. And here's an example. So you can see that um, even with the, uh, the HTML, the, the templating, it's kind of doing this stuff by magic under the hood. So all you do is create this view you tell it just like a, a model or, or yeah just like the models or, or the forms you can pass it uh, a model instance and then the fields and then it will kind of automatically implicitly will look for an html um an uh, html document called author underscore form so i think it's based on the the models you can also customize that but so it's doing a lot of stuff implicitly and there's a good chance that you don't, that you'll wanna customize that or override different things. But so even this, this create view, which is not, not the most uh, specialized view, it, it gives you a lot of stuff for free. So there are some advantages and then there are obviously some, some disadvantages. So let's just go ahead and try to implement this. So I'm gonna make a create view, so class, and I'm gonna call it uh, new post create view. And I'm gonna inherit from create view. And I'm gonna import this. I'll just copy this import statement. And then it tells me uh, what I have to do here. So I'm just gonna kind of copy this basically. So I need model and fields, so just like a, uh, a form. So model, this will be uh, post and fields. This will be, I'll look at my model. So I have author, title, and text. Uh, 
so I'm gonna just leave it at that for now. Um, and then what I have to do here is I'm gonna go to the URL. So this is basically like my view function, except it's a, a class rather than an actual function. So I'm gonna go here into URLs and remember that this uh, second, <clears throat> The second argument is expecting a, a callable or a function basically. So rather than uh, importing this new post, which now doesn't exist, it's gonna be my, whatever this is called, uh, new post preview. And again, this is expecting a function and this is a class. So I'm gonna have to call this dot as view helper method, I'm actually going to call it, and we'll we'll take a look at this in a second. But this is actually going to return a function. We'll see if that works. So let's go here. I'm going to go to slash posts. And if I go to create a new one, it works. Does anyone notice any difference from, from what you saw maybe on Monday, if you recall? Just the styling seems really good. It's not, yeah, so I didn't. <laughs> yeah, I didn't. Oh. I didn't do this. I just copied from the from the uh, readme. But what about this? This author. So I have one user, which is the super user. Let's let's look at our model real quick. So I have this author which is based on the auth user model, which is based on who is logged in. Now I've created a super user, so I'm logged in as the super user and that, that super user is you. So um, it, so in, in general, if you're filling out a form on the internet, do you get like a drop down list of every possible user in the system mm -hmm. and you just choose your name and yeah, it's usually done implicitly, right? So if you're logged in, uh, that's kind of handled under the hood. So you don't have to, you don't have to indicate on the form who you are. So you know, we'll talk about authentication and stuff next week, but uh, this is something we'll have to look at. So in the example, the example readme, this is handled here. I'll just comment this out for a second. Um, so we're doing this all by hand. We're checking if the form is valid. And then we're doing this, we're saving it. We're doing commit is false. And then what we're doing is pulling out the, the user. So this is not really how you want to do it. This is kind of just like a dummy example. Um, next week, we'll see how to do that. But you pull out the actual user and then you add it to the form. So post the author is this. And then this had the, the current date. So you just grab the current date and then you'd also insert that. So we're not just, we're, we're taking stuff from the form and then we're adding things or modifying it before we actually save it, before we do a final commit. So here we need to do something similar, but uh, in, the, in the view, you can just, you know, everything's kind of right in front of your face. You can just access things and modify them. But here with this class, it's a little mysterious. Like how do we, how do, we do that? So this is where class-based views get tricky. Um, if you're using all the default stuff, which more than likely you're not, it's pretty easy, but the more, uh, the more specialized you want, the, I'd say arguably the, the less payoff there is. <clears throat> um, 
But so we have this create view. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a look into the source code. So I'm going to press, you know, I'm on a Mac. So this option, I'm going to click on that. And that's going to take me to the Django source code. You can also get there. Um, let's see here. Yeah, if, if you go into your virtual environment, because your virtual environment will have the actual code. And then you go to the virtual environment, the library. And then you look at Django. And you can see all this stuff. And let's look at our views. We're importing create view from Django.views. So we're in Django now. So Django.views, let's find views. There we are. So Django.views.generic, let's find generic. And that's not there. So there's some magic happening with this in it. So most of the init files we've seen are just, they don't really do anything, but here's an example of one that's uh, basically like pulling in things from the module and making them accessible. So you don't need to worry about the details here, but uh, that's what's happening there. And then, so we want to uh, dot edit. So we have this, where were we? Uh, the edit right here. So this edit.py, so that's where we got to, you know, when I just clicked on it and VS Code kind of knows how things are connected. So it got me there, but you can get there manually as well. Okay, so we're in the, we're in Django source code right now. And here's the create view. And you can see that there's not much going on here. It's kind of just a wrapper for these other things. So this is, multiple inheritance. It's inheriting from this thing called single object template response mixin and base create view. And if you go back to the documentation, by the way, I'm telling you all of this is just essentially context, just, just so you can get a feel for looking at stuff like this. You don't have to know any of this in particular. So the, the documentation matches, we can see that it's following the method resolution order. So the first thing it's gonna look in, the first ancestor it's gonna look in is single object template response mixin, which is the first thing listed here. And then next it's gonna look in base create view, which is here. So unfortunately we can't, it's not easy to see the structure of how everything's connected. Um, because we, we'd have to trace everything out and it's gonna end up being this tree. And then we'd have to kind of map it out to see what it, what it actually looks like. That's where this template response mix in. So we can play the same game. We'll just follow stuff up the chain for a minute. So the single template response mix in. So that goes here and that inherits from template response mix in, which is where we're getting this, this second one right here. So we're like following this, even though this, Right here is kind of like a flat representation. This is actually like a tree, with different nodes that, that are branching. So this one leads to this one, and then there's an independent path that starts there. Okay, so this template response mix in, you can see we have some more class variables. So, so at, as we're seeing this stuff, like one thing to note is that we can override this, right? If we have a subclass, <clears throat> um, this thing, which is subclassing, or, yeah, which is a subclass of create view, then anything we see in here is stuff that we could customize, right? So we could just override those methods. So template name field, for example, is something that we could override. Um, and so there's a bunch of methods, get template names. You don't need to worry, uh, worry about any of this stuff, but you know, this is something you could override and let's go ahead and keep going up. So template response mix in. So this is a, a base class. So this is a mix in that can be used to render a template. So a mix in again is kind of, it's a class, but it's usually like for specific adding like very specific functionality. So this is a class that handles rendering a template. So again, we have some more uh, some more 
variables we can override. And here's this render to response. So this returns a response, blah, blah, blah. And you can see everything it does. You don't need to really know any of that stuff. So I'm gonna go back and the shortcut for that, like I'm going, gonna go back, which is uh, option command and then left arrow. If you wanna do that, I'm gonna go back <clears throat> to this create view and I'm gonna follow. So I've kind of like, you know, traversed all the, the nodes to the leaf node here following this. And now I'm gonna do the same thing here. Let's create base view. So create base view. This also inherits from two other things. So lots of fun there. Uh, this is a base view for creating a new object instance. So there's get and post available that you can override. Okay, I'll follow the, the model form mix in here. Model form mix in also, unfortunately inherits from two other things. So you can see this just keeps going. Um, but here's some get form class, get form quarks, get success URL, form valid. This might look familiar. Um, so we're actually gonna be overwriting this one uh, in a second. But here's this form valid. So you, you can see in, uh, in our view, this create view, we can override, we can do def form valid. And let's see what it takes, self and the form. And we'll, uh, we'll do this in a sec, but typically uh, you're not just gonna wanna, when you overwrite stuff, you're probably also gonna wanna call the, the uh, super version of, of that because it's probably doing a bunch of other stuff that needs to happen. Uh, so anyway, so yeah, we could uh, override that, which we will in a second. And let's keep going, form mix in. Form mix in, context mix in, blah, blah, blah. So you can keep going. And finally, we get to context mix in. So I'm gonna, let's see. I'm just gonna skip ahead. So view, uh, view is the kind of base class for everything. And we can see in the documentation that that's at the very bottom here, view. So any view is gonna inherit from view. And there's just a few things that it's gonna do. Um, but here's where that as view method comes. So in our URLs, oops. These URLs we have to call. So we, we have our, uh, our class that, that we're creating, our, our view class. And then we have to call this as view method in order to kind of turn this class into a method. And let's take a look. Oh, what was that? Yeah. Uh, so this view, we have an, an as view, which we can call. And you can see that this returns, it returns this. So it returns a view. It, you don't have to worry about how any of this works, but uh, you can kind of just see how it, or at least, have some idea of how it fits together. This is very baffling and confusing and I wouldn't recommend like, I'm gonna learn Django by digging around in the source code. I don't think that's a good idea. But it's also good just, you know, to not be too intimidated, even if you have no idea what's going on. I think it's a good idea just to get in the habit of at least taking a look at, at the source code. Okay, so I'm gonna close out all of that. Very long digression. So uh, we're going to go back here, and let's try. Let's try just saving a form. So even though I don't like this, I'm going to go ahead and use it and see what we get. And I go to save, and I get some kind of error. It says uh, no URL to redirect to. Please provide a URL or define a get absolute URL method on the model. So. Uh, you may or may not remember, but this is one of the methods that we can actually override in the class hierarchy. Uh, but there's a couple other ways we could do that as well. So there's another uh, uh, another parameter we can pass here. 
uh, like a class, a class variable, um, and it's called success URL. And this is basically like a redirect URL. So if I make a post request, right, I would make the post request, I would save it, and then I would redirect the user. So this success URL is basically, um, it's basically gonna do the same thing. So I'll do, uh, Reverse, there's something reverse lazy. Uh, I'm going to import from dot URLs, import with reverse and reverse lazy. I'll use reverse lazy. Um, so uh, lazy functions, does anyone know what a lazy function is? It's basically, um, it's basically something that won't execute until the last possible moment. Um, so for example, a Python, like a, a list comprehension, um, or a, a, a generator, so you can create a list basically without creating it all at once. You just create, you just access each element as you need it. So this lazy function is doing something. I'm not sure what, what all the details are, but it's probably waiting till the last minute to get this dynamically so it doesn't have a stale value in there. <laughs> okay. So the success URL reverse lazy, and then I'm gonna pass in the, the name of my route. So new post, I'm gonna save this and then go back here. And I'll see if that works. So I think that worked. Um, Oh, actually, I redirected the same one. I want to do that. Uh, let me redirect to post list. Let me try that one more time. Okay. So I saved it, and I have, I'm now like redirecting to where I want to go. Okay, uh, so the the next problem is that I have this author here. So I don't wanna include this. I wanna get rid of the field. I don't want this to be something that a user can, can access. If I do that, I get, an error. So integrity error, not null, constraint failed. So I'm trying to save something to the database without uh, an author. So I get this error. So if I include it and I let the user control what's happening, I don't want that. But if I don't include it, then um, you know I can't actually save anything. So I'm gonna have to somehow implicitly grab uh, the user out of there. And the way you could do that is with uh, this form valid. You can try that. This form valid, pass on a form, and I'm going to do x equals form. And then I'm going to just return dot. I'm going to override this just so I can kind of look at it. And then I'm going to call immediately call the super. So uh, super All right. Um, and then what I'm going to do here is because it's hard to see what's 
going on, I'm going to start using the debugger. So I saw at some point that there is a method called form valid in the chain of uh, ancestors um, of create view. So I'm going to create a breakpoint here. And I'm going to go into the debugger. I'm going to do run and debug. And you can see that Django is uh, fortunately an option here. So it's going to set up some automatic configuration. So I'm going to choose Django. And it actually should, let me see. That port is already in use. OK, let me go back here. Okay, so I'm gonna quit my uh, server here. I'll go back here and I will try to, so I, I, I may have something already saved here. Let me check. Um, can't see it, but. So if you've done this before, so you, you can also click on uh, create a launch JSON file. So let's create a launch JSON file, which is what you're going to end up doing in any event. So here's the launch file. So if I run the debugger in this project now, since I chose Django, I'm getting some default, but I could do this all by hand. So this is just the name. I could change this. Um, so the program, so anytime I run something, it's like whatever, manage.py. And then I pass it an argument. In this case, the default one is going to be run server. So when I enter the debugger, it's going to run my server. So it's going to basically run the app in debug mode. And here's a couple other options. So just my code. So if this is set to true by default, this just means it's not going to go into Django's source code. But you could make that false if, if you wanted to, to do that. <laughs> um, I wouldn't recommend that as a practical thing. You can just try it out, but you shouldn't have to change Django source code. OK. Hey, Chen. Yeah. What was that uh, shortcut you had said on accessing Django source code? Oh, so if you, um, so for example, here's something from Django, this create view, which I'm importing. Mm -hmm. So uh, in VS Code, you can click on option. And it should give you, should you know, show change how it's displayed. So option and click, and that will take you into the where awesome where, where that thing is defined. Okay, thank you. Okay, so this uh, that JSON. So you might have to mess around with this. This is the one thing you might need to to change. So this is going to be the root directory. So depending on where you opened VS Code, this workspace folder is basically where you opened VS Code. Let me just double check. So I think that's good. I'm on the same level as manage.py. If I had opened this at a higher level, I would have to add something to the path here, but I think this will work as is. So this should work now. So now I'm going to run the debugger. I've set a breakpoint here in this form valid. So I'm going to run the debugger, which is going to execute Python manage.py run server. So now you can see the server is running and I'm in debug mode. So I should be able to go to my app now. You know, just click here. So I can interact with my app as normal. I'm actually in debug mode, uh, but I haven't hit any breakpoints. So my breakpoint is going to get hit when I try to make a post request and this form valid method gets called. So because of all the magic of multiple inheritance, I really don't know when that is going to be, but um, it should be at some point. So I'm going to go here to create a post. And notice that this didn't get called. So I'm making a post request. So this, this view is actually getting used, but it's not calling this specific method. I haven't submitted the form, so it doesn't call form valid. 
So now I'm going to add something here and I'm going to save it. And I immediately, so this is basically frozen now. It kind of freezes and now I get redirected to this breakpoint. So now I'm in the debugger, so I kind of have this live app going, but I'm in the debugger now. So I can look in the debug console and I can check values. So I could say form and I have this form. So I'm right here, so I have access to this stuff. I can check my model. So I should have access to model fields, success URL, all that stuff. Uh, let's try. I have to do self dot success URL. And that's slash post um, and form dot. I can check things on the form. Let's check the form. Let's do dir form. A whole bunch of stuff. I can get, I've got a little dot, dot, dot here. You can see some of the stuff we've seen before, like full clean, for example, uh, fields, data. There's a whole bunch of stuff here. Um, I'll do form that is bound. They want to know what uh, this is. So what's the difference between a bound form and an unbound form in Django? An unbound form cannot do validation. Yeah, yeah, uh, okay, good. So uh, I, just, I, just looked, I just looked it up. <laughs> sure. Yeah, so uh, unbound form uh, can't do validation because it's not, it basically means it's not filled in. So an unbound form is, a not filled in form. So uh, a bound form is filled in, it's associated with a particular model. So like here, I've filled this, I filled this in, so the, the form is bound. If I were checking this as I was making the initial request and sending out the empty form, it, it, it should be false. But- Does that what I mean by binding? I've read that in places. Uh, so, so can you say it again? Is that what's meant by binding then? Yeah, so in, in the uh, Django context, yeah. So that's uh, Django terminology. I'm not sure I've heard that elsewhere, but yeah, so this is checking basically if the form is filled in. Okay, so, you know, we don't really need to worry about this particular attribute, but the, the the issue is, you know, this by by magic, this form valid is, is actually getting called, which means we can access it, which means we can modify, we can modify the form before we save it. So here, when we were doing doing it in a functional based way, we had the form and then we had to grab the author. So let's um you actually go up here. I'm going to go here into these uh, these variables up here. So this is this is you know everything that's available to you. So we have a form, and you can see all the stuff on form. Let's look at the data. So I can see there's this CSRF middleware token, which Django supplies automatically. Uh, the title and text, which are just nonsense, and that stuff exists if we look in the See. So the CSRF middleware token is coming from here. Okay, so we don't need to worry about that right now, but so we we, we can have access to all this stuff. So if we're trying to, to debug, we can basically see see everything. It might be difficult to navigate to, but it should all be there. Okay, and there's also self. So self is 
coming from this class. So as view, it's that function or that, that method that we saw earlier. So you can see that is there, fields, title, text. So here's the fields, right, that we overrode and that's showing up right there. Um, let's see, success URL, we added that, posts, and then let's see, we can take a look at the request object as well. So that's gonna be important. Let's take a look at the request object. You can see any cookies, you can see the, the method, blah, blah, blah. So if there were uh, parameters or anything, you could take a look at that, the body. Let's see. So there's all kinds of stuff here, user. So, user is something uh, that might be important. So that's kind of what we want to get. So let's just take a look and we'll see if we can grab the user. So um, again, just be, you can play around with this. We're, we're frozen here, so we have access to all this stuff. So I want to see what self.request.user, is that available to me? It is available to me. And I can see that it's that super user, so it's you. So it's that super user that I've created. Again, we're talking about creating other users and stuff like that next week, but uh, this is a user that I've created that I have available to me. So I have that user actually. So if I need to insert this user into the form, I should be able to do that. So I'm gonna, so I, I now know how I can access the user, the currently logged in user. Uh, so let's see the form. So I wanna do form dot what? Author, is that a thing? So the post form object has no attribute author. So let's take a look at our models. So I might not be able to access that directly. So let's do, uh, what is that form? You can see dir form, maybe we can see what's going on there. We can, it might be easier to see here. So let's go to form and so I, I can see here that there's an instance. So because the form is bound, it has an instance associated with it. And the instance is the post. So that's good, that's our actual model. So we go here, so the instance, and then here we see that we have this author attribute here. So we have text, title. So we actually can check out our model via, via the debugger here. So I do form dot instance dot author. And I get this does not exist. Uh, because it, it doesn't exist right now. Uh, but we can fix that. So I'm gonna go here. I'm gonna do, so I'm gonna do form.instance.author equals the request dot, uh, what was it, request dot, what was it? It's not request that user, it's, is it just request that user? Yeah, I think that's what you did. Okay. Oh, it's self dot request. Sorry. Okay. So I'm gonna I'm gonna stop the debugger now. So I've changed my code. So I'm gonna save this, and I'm gonna rerun the debugger. Um. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna rerun the debugger here. I'm gonna stop at the same place. So here, since this is already set up, um, you can click on this little cog and it will take you to the launch JSON here. But you can, once you have it set up, you can just press play here. Okay, 
So server should be running. So I'm gonna go back here. I'm gonna create a new post. Uh, and I save it and my breakpoint hits. I come back here. Um, so this, I'll, I'll step down one. So this line will execute, line 25 will execute. So this form should have the stuff that I want on it now. So I can see that it's a bound form, it's valid, that's all good. Uh, fields, title, text. So let's take a look at the form. Take a look at the instance. Author ID is one. So I've added, looks like I've successfully added um, this user as the author. So this should work now. So I'm gonna press this uh, continue play button. This is gonna keep going. It, it'll go to the next breakpoint, but I don't have another one. So it should just finish executing. So it looks like this finished executing and this worked. So now I could double check that. I'm gonna go into the admin and double check that this new is actually associated with the super user that I have. So admin posts and new, and it belongs to you. So it looks like that worked. Okay, so that's, I think that's, um, that's basically all I really wanted to go over is uh, the debugger, which is pretty useful, um, especially for Django, because there's a lot of stuff in the middle happening, especially with, um, especially with the class-based views, but even with the function-based views. So this stuff is totally optional. You can look at the documentation. There's a whole bunch of stuff. There's create view. There's also like combined view. There's create update, create update, delete, create update, you know, whatever views that you can use. And then you override stuff. Um, and you can override any method, just like normal object oriented programming. You can override anything and, and do what you want. A general rule of thumb is, especially with Django, is call the call the super. So if you override something, do whatever custom behavior you want and then call the, the super version of that. Any questions? So um, I'll point you, it, if you're interested in, in this, I think this is a kind of a good, I'll, I'll post this, uh, a link to this in the Slack, but I think this is a good, uh, it talks about the detail view, which is not what we looked at, but it's the same basic idea. So he kind of just walks through what it's like to dig through the Django source code. And this kind of activity is probably what you're gonna spend a lot of your, uh, a lot of your time doing if you work as a, a software developer. You get some code base, which may or may not be like, you know, is the Django design a little convoluted? Maybe. Um, so yeah, that's just how it is. All right. Um, so the challenge for today, I think I'll put you guys in threes, uh, but it's an event calendar. You can kind of, it's very open-ended, so you can kind of do whatever you like. Um, and you can either, you know, you, yeah, it's very open-ended. You can, you can do whatever you want. If you want to try uh, a class-based view, Maybe just one of them, you could try doing everything. Uh, either way, um, however you want to do it, it's fine. <laughs>